Good morning, folks. It is currently 5.15 in the morning. I'm going on a trip with my pastor to Kansas City, Missouri, a place I've never been before. In case you're wondering, yes, that is the moon right above my head. It's early. We're here in Kansas City. We're ready for Idea Day Midwest slash Idea Day webinar. It's going to be huge online. Why I'm so ready? She's ready because it's gonna happen. We've been preparing. And, We're ready. And she wants some barbecue. And I want barbecue. Because of we're here for, for work and ministry, but we're also here to have a good time and eat some uh, pork ribs. We are at Joe's Barbecue in Kansas City. I can't wait. This to place is eat amazing. This barbecue. Uh, the hype is real. Uh, have you ever had a slice brisket before? No, is it awesome? It is pretty good, sir. So the burn in is the brisket. Yeah. It's We're at Oklahoma Joe's. Oklahoma Joe's is the greatest barbecue place, not in the Midwest, in the entire world. This is the place that people come. And the most amazing thing about this food is that it's all made inside of a gas station. We are in a gas station, and I'm telling you, you want to come here next time you have a chance. <laughs> Personally, the, the most that impacted me was understanding that it doesn't matter if I'm bivocational or it doesn't matter if I don't have, don't have all the money to raise. As long as I know God has called me, that I can go and do what God has called me to do. And targeting the exact audience I'm looking for. How to do that and what does that look like. I did really enjoy the, the panel where we could discuss and get different perspectives on how the scripture and the study of the scripture affects our practical ministry. And so what, what we came away with was the word is the center of our ministry. The authority of the word, the sufficiency of the word, God gave us the Bible to tell us how to live. And so that affects how our, our ministry works. So there's three ways we get the Bible. You preach the Bible. And then you look at the whole Bible and you say, there's this big story here. God is starting the story in the beginning. He's saying, I created the world, then man falls, he disobeys God's word. But then Christ comes and redeems us. And then Christ says he's coming back to recreate the world. So you have this big story where, where God is reconciling the world to himself in Christ. And that's, that's what we call the gospel. And so we have a, a gospel-saturated ministry. So it's expository preaching, it's a narrative-driven understanding of the Bible, and then it's gospel-saturated, that the power of the gospel is what changes us. As you can see, 
say it's kind of a hangout spot. So uh, a lot of our adult small groups will use it as well. Originally, I think this was designed to be a parking garage, the original design for the building. And upstairs was supposed to be racquetball courts. Somewhere along the way, somebody wise said, hey, let's think about using this space for reaching teenagers. I just uh, spent the day with Idea Day and I got to speak on church revitalization, which is probably my favorite subject with the church. And I have come to realize that 80% of our churches are either plateaued or declining. And if that's the case, then we have to revitalize or our churches are going to eventually die. And so with church revitalization, really where it starts is a God-given passion. And then that, that God-given passion fuels uh, uh, our vision and our vision then fuels hard work and if we will just work extremely hard with the vision and the passion that God has given us it's amazing to see what God and God alone can do yeah it was uh, it was awesome you know I had a fantastic time um, there's a lot of different perspectives on that I was able to hear on different topics which I think I can go back home and once it resonates I can share with our church body it was awesome to be able to sit on the third panel today dealing with family and ministry and it was awesome to be able to share my own experience growing, uh, my girls growing up in ministry and uh, still loving the Lord and loving ministry and even to this day involved in ministry and so it was awesome to be able to share how God blessed our family to have that continuity all the way through and hopefully it was a help to many of the pastors that are here maybe struggling how to balance life and ministry, family and ministry as well and uh, be able to tap, take away some great ideas on how to be intentional uh, in that balance between family and ministry. All right, I have a special guest on today's vlog with me, Pastor Josh Tice from Southern Hills. Uh, Josh, tell us why we're in Kansas City. So we're in right Kansas now. City because there's an Idea Day here yeah. in Kansas City. So what is Idea Day? Oh, Idea Day is a day for ministry leaders to share ideas. So I'm a pastor, and there are a lot of other pastors that like to get around round tables and have a collaborative uh, experience where they're sharing the best ideas that they've received and have accomplished in ministry. So in Kansas City, this one was awesome. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. We explored downtown, got to meet a lot of nice people. Um, had some great discussions and ideas were shared, um, and hopefully uh, for the betterment of everybody there. Yeah, it was awesome. Not just about ideas, it's also about good food. It's Kansas City. <laughs> Sorry, you're, you're live. Hi guys, my name is Shorty. There are two things I say about hugs. A hug from a stranger means more than from somebody you know. If it's from a stranger, it's from the heart. Second, if we as much taken in this world as yours fighting battles, what a wonderful world this would be. We all come from the same race, the human race, and all lives matter. I love that. Now for my famous spiel. I say life's too short and so Wait, am I. Now? Now's the spill? Yeah. Go. Life's too short and so am I. You can ask me to hurry up. I'll hurry up, but I'm not rushing. I'm not rushing because I'm American. If you're American in the bedroom, American in the kitchen, what are you in the bathroom? European. It's okay to talk to yourself. It's okay to answer yourself. You don't have to start worrying. You ask yourself to teach yourself. That's when you're in trouble. Two more. Have you guys ever heard of the horrible, horrible hereafter disease? Everybody suffers from and there's no cure. Haven't you ever walked into a room and forgotten what you're here after? I say the worst is fun for last. You know the quickest way to make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. That's it. Bye-bye. God bless you.